Ever since the release of Elder God Arrows, I've questioned the use of crossbows in the criminal bolts, and perhaps you should too. Why? Well, you're about to find out. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Over 60% of my viewers aren't subscribed, and as I'm closing in on that big 100,000 subscriber milestone, I'd like to remind you to subscribe. Let's move on. If you use the ranged combat style in any capacity, you should be aware of the ammunition you're using. With the exception of a few two-handed weapons such as the Wyvern or Eldex crossbow, all two-handed weapons use arrows, and one-handed weapons such as the Ascension crossbow use bolts. The best one-handed range ammunition are the criminal bolts E, which stand for enchanted. The most commonly used bolts of this category are Ruby, Onyx, and Hydrox bolts for their effects, namely extra damage on high health targets, healing, or more drilling than the average parachutist. The best two-handed range ammo are the tier 95 Elder God arrows, where the ones you use depend on the type of content you're attempting, but pretty much every single one of these arrows has a use. I'll be comparing crossbows and bows in this video with the aforementioned ammunition using a set of tier 90 ascension and the tier 90 noxious longbow, using the perks precise 6 and chroming 4. While this isn't the best in slot perk setup, it is a very strong one, especially in combination with the greater ricochet ability, which also has fantastic synergy with both the Corona bolts and the elder gold arrow. The first boss I used for a comparison was Vindicta. Why? Well, Vindicta is just a big DPS dummy with some defense that is perfect to slap around as your average high-level ranger. For the Ascension Crossbow setup, I was using Ruby Boo Criminal Bolt C, and for the two-handed range setup using the Noxious Longbow, I was using Wen Arrows. When using Wen Arrows, basic abilities generate a stack of Icy Chill, which will give you extra damage and accuracy per stack for both your thresholds and ultimate abilities. You have a max of 15 stacks, and abilities like Greater Ricochet with Chroming 4 can instantly give you 7 stacks by just using that ability. Essentially, these arrows, just like Ruby Boo Criminal Bolt C, are damage increase for dummies, and are commonly used for most bosses. When comparing these two ammunition types without giving one star the advantage over the other with certain gear like the Stalker's Ring for the bow, I didn't really see that big of a difference in kill times on average. The kills using the Ruby Recumbent Bolts were about 4% slower than when arrows on average. When using full arrows, which give you 15% more base damage but reduce your accuracy by 10%, I was able to get similar results as well because I was splashing here and there as I was only using a Sharpshooter Aura at Vindicta. The Reckless Aura will be used in the next test though, being Nex. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans is a free-to-play fantasy game that combines MMO elements of real-time strategy and base building. As chief of your very own village, you gather resources to upgrade your village to increase both its economic and military power. To do so, you're going to need to gather elixir and gold, which can be obtained from resource-generating buildings, raiding on the 90-level long campaign, and by attacking other players' villages. Yep, there is PvP, but before you start raiding, make sure you have a strong army you can strategically deploy for victory. And while being victorious is great, don't forget to protect your own base by building defenses such as towers and walls in case of a revenge attack. So why should you play Clash of Clans? Clash of Clans is easy to get into, fun to play, and extremely popular. No, really, they have over 60 million reviews with a 4.6 star average rating, and that's just on Google Play. If Clash of Clans sounds like your cup of tea, download the game for free by scanning the QR code on screen or by clicking the link in the description below. Now, while I was still using Wen Arrows and Ruby Criminal Bolts, the next test was done a little bit differently due to a high defense, so I allowed myself to switch some ammo mid-fight. With the bow, I used Blackstone Arrows at the start of the fight to reduce her defense by up to 15%, and for the crossbows, I gave myself access to both Diamond Criminal Bolts and even Hydrix ones to switch to for some adrenaline to even it out. And while I'm trying to get these tests as consistent as possible, I'm going to have to say that this is a very personal thing. You might be able to switch your bolt to ammunition more optimally, but out of these tests, personally, I got faster kills using Blackstone Arrows and when arrows. The kills on average were faster with the bow and arrows, although that being said, there were kills that were just as fast using the crossbow with bolts. So I think RNG and me maybe running out of range sometimes while doing a threshold with the crossbows was the reason that there were some slower outliers with the crossbow. So, so far it doesn't seem that there's that big of a difference between bows and crossbows any longer, although bows do seem to have the edge. But then you arrive at poisonable bosses, and oh boy, does that statement change. Let's start with a boss that is quite difficult because it's such a DPS-dependent boss. 
the ambassador, the final boss of the Shadow Reef, aka Elite Dungeon 3. Now, I usually use magic nowadays, but when I used range at this boss, you know, maybe like one or two years ago, I really struggled to take it out, especially the last part of the fight is incredibly difficult because you need to deal a lot of damage, you need to stay alive, and you need to have some kind of defensive or adrenaline ready to take on the name core attack. Big arrows can be stacked up to a maximum of 400% more poison damage, which takes quite some time, but bosses that have a lot of health, such as the Ambassador, are perfect examples of where you can use these arrows. Combine those arrows with Weapon Poison++++ plus 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 potions, Cinder Banes, Quorum Incense Sticks, and the Vampirism Aura and Blood Reader for extra procs, and you have a poison damage machine gun. Hitting four or five, six thousands of poison damage so often just makes the final phase of the Ambassador an absolute breeze and allowed me to get around a 25% faster kill at the Ambassador than with just Ruby becoming a Bolt and Hydrix. It's so powerful that I don't see a reason to ever use a different combat style of this boss, including magic just because this is so laid back and chill, and you can get 4 minute kills or faster depending on the type of gear you're using with these big arrows. It's just absolutely insane how good a poison build is. And that poison build will work at other poison ball bosses with a large health pool. For example, Carapac, a boss where you can easily stack poison all the way through the fight without having to worry about losing your stacks because you didn't attack the boss for like 30 or 40 seconds. At Carapac, even though I forgot to activate my god book with both the crossbow and bow tests, I was able to get around 21% faster kills using big arrows compared to ruby bolts and the occasional use of Hardwick's bolts as well. I'll be honest, I could have probably used those Hardwick's becoming a bolt a little bit more care pack, but yeah, between those ruby back bolts and big arrows, that difference is huge. The Arglaiso is a boss where RNG can affect your kill times, as if you start out with the beams mechanic, as I did quite often, your death swiftness at the start of each kill will be wasted, and you won't be able to deal as much damage. Now, even though pretty much every single kill of me using the bow and big arrows started with the beams mechanic, leading me to waste my death swiftness and losing out on some damage potential and big arrow stacks, of course, my kills with big arrows were still 14% faster than those with Ruby Becumbral Bolts. Now, I'm fairly certain that at a higher rate, let's say 1000% in rage, that difference is going to be even bigger because you'll be at max stacks, so 400% extra poison damage from those big arrows for a longer period of time. At 500% in rage, I could only get to around 320% or so, so I didn't even see the full effect of my poison DPS. Other than the big arrows, I did test full and when arrows were applicable on other bosses, and the results were very similar to those of the criminal bolts, although just a slight bit faster, even though dual wield has the better basic ability being needle strike, opposed to dazing shot or its greater variant. I was also surprised by the effectiveness of using splintering arrows, which are far cheaper than when or full arrows, Obviously much worse, but they turn the Salt of the Wound ability at max stacks, which is 13 with those arrows instead of 10, in a 253% average ability damage threshold, which is quite strong, although something I wouldn't really use unless you can't afford the better arrows. Also, there's the Jazz Demon and Dragon Bane arrows. The Dragon Bane arrows are absolutely best in slot for Elite Dungeon 2, or when you're killing Hydrox Dragons, you will absolutely demolish these dragons because you get 30% more damage and 20% more accuracy. It's just, they're insane. They will beat crossbows easily. So what's the conclusion here? Do crossbows suck and should you sell them right now? Well, no, not entirely. In a 1v1 situation, bows, given that you're using the right arrow type, seem to range from just outperforming the criminal bolts and crossbows to outright beating them if the boss is poisonable. Because the bow's barely outperforming the crossbow in some locations, I don't think it's worth selling your ascensions and getting a bow straight away especially since a future update could suddenly change which of these two are clearly the best. This is probably not what you want to hear, but if you have the money, simply buy both types of ranged weapon, as crossbows are the more versatile weapon and can be wielded while using your shield for defensives, or when AoEing down minions with mechanized gin chompers. You're still going to need crossbows for that. You could probably fill those roles by simply getting yourself some chaotic crossbows from Dungeoneering. Crossbows can also be used as an adrenaline switch with Hardux bolts, especially easy if you have a Pernix Quiver. 
For high level players, I think it's worth sticking to a bow, but only if you're doing bosses that make you a considerable amount of GP, as otherwise you aren't really speeding up your kills that much and wasting a bunch of money on expensive arrows. I also think it goes without saying that if you have the bow of the last guardian, you will always out DPS crossbows no matter what, thanks to its passive and special attack. And for mid level players, simply stick to the highest tier weapon you can buy for the cheapest price, which are currently ascension crossbows. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like down below and feel free to share your thoughts and experiences with the ammo types mentioned in this video in the comments down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.